And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Valve is getting ready to whine, we think, question mark. More on that and DOS keyboard. Turns out that DOS sorry for banning everyone who mentioned the open source version of the software. Valve doesn't do anything. We continue our ongoing coverage and DXVK gets a new version and a weird cousin. Steam goes for the TV, and in a Twitch, it was gone. And now you can bring all the RGB swag to your MSI laptop running Linux. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel, all on the open source. Goodness, uh, joined every week. That is one Jordan Swag. He is freshly pied and from Britannia, one Pedro Monteas. Hello. Check him out. Look at him. He's brilliant. Because <laughs> with you at home, helping us form... Cocaine Voltron, that's right, everyone in chat room dynamic. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each. Look, I got a pen. I'm clicking it. Others oh, life organs. Um, Jordan, what's up? <laughs> like you said, I'm freshly pied. And given that we were talking about porn a while ago, that just made my brain go to an entirely different. It's a different kind of pie. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah, no, uh, no, no, nothing, nothing too uh, crazy happened this week. Um, yeah, watch watch Disenchanted. Uh, check out the. I think we talked about it in the pre pre super chosen chosen. So uh, yeah, you can you can listen to that. Um, and I I, I, I I don't I don't know. Pedro, what's we, going on this week? <laughs> Fuck you. Well, I caught that uh, piggy bank saving thing that eBay did earlier in the week, and that got me the 500 gig uh, SSD for the future Steambox 360. That is slowly getting there. So that's storage taken care of. That's 500 gigs of M.2 SATA for like 60 pounds. Pretty good. That's kind of brilliant. Um, but check it out. I uh, did a couple of things. Background, we talked about it in the pre-pre super shows and patrons. Go check that out. It was nowhere near as boring as I thought. Uh, the forums have been uh, shut realm static. They've been moved into the CMS that we're using, the WordPress, into the main web zone. I imported all the users and all that. If you want to go check it out, bang on it a little bit. Let me know if it's on fire. I know it's slow as balls right now, but it's like that for a reason. Uh, I even did a post in there. I think for the first post in months. I know no one really uses the forums anymore. We're all in Discord, but I didn't want to like nuke them from orbit just for like history purposes. But I posted mm -hmm. a benchmark of uh, the new Blender benchmark. So if you want to have an EP swinging contest, join in that conversation, see what's broken. And uh, let me know. Your login should still work, theoretically. Uh, anyway, is the horse still up and kicking this week? The horse has, um, it's, a, it's a little flush in the face. I think it's, it may have been drinking a little too much wine. It's the Steam Linux Update of the Week. Oh Zomgree. Oh, baby, you know it's shit show incoming right here. 100% Valve seems to be working on tools to get Windows gamers running on Linux. Files hint at Steam Play compatibility tools to help expand Steam OS library. So, okay. First off, uh, first off, I got to do the right spot in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> first things third on this. This isn't new. This has been in the works since January. And, you know, second, I'm not saying this is something they should have waited to have available in order to launch with the Steam boxes, but this is something we should have had available to launch with Steam boxes when those were out. Mm -hmm. And you you were talking about timing on this one, though, right? Yeah, because uh, here here's the thing: we've had a couple of interesting advances in the years since uh, Steam boxes less than stellar launch. Um, main, mainly uh, better better wine support and DXVK, which was the big one because for the longest time you could not play DirectX 10 or uh, 11 games through wine um now that is entirely possible and you get better performance as well so if, and x input and x like i said improved wine right like it would have been a really crappy experience uh if if valve had something like this beforehand we'll talk we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the implications of it but yeah i mean and then you you raised a good point about how they they completely botched the release because again they, they launched they launched steam machines in the middle of a console generation Mm -hmm. which means that people have already spent the money they've spent their like five six hundred bucks on that thing that's going to keep them entertained for the next couple of years so you're uh, we, we we've we've talked at length about the failures of the steam machines but continue regarding the topic at hand 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I hope this is the way that we can that we finally get to actually play those old Windows games that we all have on our uh, Steam libraries, and you know, not having to manually go and set up the wine prefixes for each and every single one of them. You're still going to be doing that, but uh, Steam will be doing that automatically for you. So. All I can say is that I'm very much looking forward to the new and interesting ways or infuriating. I don't know. One of the things I'm definitely forward. worried about is like the developers are going to start targeting the compatibility tool is what they're calling it instead of Linux and like three, two, one. And I'm just kidding. But I think developers, smart ones will initially, because, you know, instead of doing a native port, let's say, hey, maybe it'll work if we can just target this. I think the smart ones will avoid this like the plague I'm not even sure people are going to be paying attention to it because we we know developers are lazy, right? They will not go out of their way to support something unless their IDE has the built-in support for it. Like we've seen that with Unity. We've seen that with Unreal. Uh, we see it with Godot. Um, so it goes back to something I was saying before about how I'm thinking maybe maybe what the future may be is Valve is trying to say, well, we're going to produce our own Win32 API. By our own, we're gonna we're gonna steal everything from wine because people have been crawling through source and yeah, there's there's a little bit of wine stuff in there. So target this. Oh, and it will work on Linux and our platform. And I don't again, I'm not necessarily sure how I feel about it. Um, but given given a lot of the dev reactions we've seen regarding Linux so far, stuff like case sensitive file systems throw them off. <laughs> so if this is if this is if this is the way they're gonna do it, I, th I think we're 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 gonna still see like the three party split of the people who don't care, the people who are gonna target it because they're lazy and they want to grab some Linux bucks, and the people who are still gonna produce native ports just because the tools they're using already facilitate that, so they don't have to go out of their way to produce a Linux version through someone like Feral or Aspire or Iculus or whatever. But I think definitely the most dangerous thing about this, the fatal flaw, is that. If this goes through and this becomes a thing, it's going to make Skyrim way too easy to play again. <laughs> that, that's not good. It's not good for them. It's not good, man. It kind of scares me a little bit. So, <laughs> all right. Well, next in our next in our Steam news, um, this is an article from PC Gamer. Links to all this crap is in our show notes. Valve has a problem with hate groups. I think any online service these days has a problem with hate groups. I'm looking at you, Twitter. Um, but so here, here's the thing. This, this is an article indicting um, Valve about saying, well, you know what? There's there are people who are just essentially obeying the letter of the law without paying attention to the spirit of the law. They get shit like the Supreme Jew category or the Supreme whatever group. And people are just being like racist assholes. And that's what ha that's what happens when you're on the internet and you give people anonymity and then direct access to other people. They become colossal fucking assholes. And they go and compare. This is how uh, PS4 Online does, deals with this. This is how Xbox Live deals with it. And the conclusion they draw is that Valve is not doing a very good job. And here's the thing. Politics aside. The only way Valve is ever going to do something about this is if it they get wind that some school shooting was planned on this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or it kicks up enough of a fuss. It doesn't have to be that specifically, but anything that stirs up right. enough of the shit. That, 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 that's that's the, the only that, thing that, that would trigger any enforcement is like, oh, is this generating a lot of negative PR? Then enforce. Exa ex exactly. Like community maintenance is one of those tricky topics, and there's like so many arguments, kind of arguments. But Valve is a business whose sole demographic is the community, and it behooves them to maintain that, to try and retain as many people as possible. And if that means allowing people to go and be a bunch of racist assholes, they're still going to make money off it. It's only until the uh, the non-racist asshole majority decides that they want to leave that Valve's going to be like, okay, well, now, now we're going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, Val Valve doesn't want to do anything. If they can, if they can find a way to automate it or delegate that to their user base, they'll do it. Otherwise, they don't care because they're still buying games on Steam. You're still using their online yeah. service. You're still trading cards, buying hats, and all that shit. And that's ultimately what they want you to do. At the end of the day, is mm -hmm. only that. Indeed. Uh, so at the end of yesterday, uh, there was a bit of a thing that Valve did. Uh, they put up a website on Steam.tv for a moment and then it went down 
and uh, Kotaku and a couple other places managed to get some screenshots of it. And the article we have here is from uh, PC Gamer, and they have said that, yes, a Valve rep has confirmed that Steam.tv is real, and it's in testing. Uh, Basically, according to the Valve rep that they talked to, they're testing like something to have to host the uh, Dota 2 annual tournament, which makes sense. It draws a lot of people, so they don't want to put that pressure on the Steam client. We've seen what that's done over the past few years. A lot of lost sales because of that, because people just can't access the store. So if they can push away the uh, the traffic for that, it, it makes sense. Also, is this how Steam Broadcasting comes to Linux? It, you just have a separate website and you just use OBS? Steam Broadcasting, stream. what's that? Yeah, that <laughs> thing that never came to Linux. Remember the thing that was actually kind of a good idea where it's like, oh, if you're playing a single player game and you want friends to just kind of you want to you want to get that simulated couch experience. They provided mm-hmm. a method to do that. And, you know, they could have leveraged the community that they have and the user base they have and the tools that they have at their disposal and make this a really compelling alternative to Twitch. But well, we're going to instead have, we're, we're going to bake some popcorn and see how they fuck it up. I mean, if they would have launched horse.tv like when they first did that, I mean, they could have gotten some traction a couple of years back, but mm-hmm. these days, man, I mean, first it was like the Discord and we see them working on the chat stuff. Like, yeah, Discord ate your lunch, but we'd really like to integrate this with our chat. It's like Twitch ate your lunch. Um, don't mm-hmm. get me right. I really wish like Twitch had some competition. YouTube gaming, that's not competition, man. Um, <laughs> Brought but, to you by YouTube. With the Valve coming into this stuff so late, I mean, it really, like, to me, if I had to draw a parallel, it would have been, like, when Microsoft tried to get back into the uh, mobile market with Win- Windows Phone 10, and it was like, it's too late. Unless you've got a time machine, those days are gone. And, to, Jordan, to you, get, you, get, you get a good point, Jordan. You get a good point. Is if they were stuck with it, but, like, so many Valve projects, they start something, they're like, yeah, peace out, whatever, I'm going to work on something else now. I was just going to say, Val, our, uh, Microsoft found an interesting way to profit off the mobile market, and that is sue everyone who makes an Android phone because you're <laughs> you're infringing on our copyright. What copyright? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go to Discovery. No. Let's grab one of the patents. Yeah, this one. <laughs> okay, let's get and, into and, some uh, game updates. Indeed. And the first one, it's uh, it's more of a mod, and it's called Half-Life Echoes. It runs on the original Half-Life engine. Uh, the developer is very keen to point out that no, it doesn't run on Half-Life Source. It doesn't run on... Uh, it's, it's, it's Gold Source. Yeah, it, it is a mod for the first Half-Life. And he also says, I tested this on Windows, so no promises it'll run anywhere else. But the premise is interesting because it's a retelling of the events of Black Mesa, Unforeseen Consequences. And from a different perspective, the perspective of a certain man with a certain suitcase just walking around the hallways that you get to see in-game more than once. So that has... It has, it, it certainly piqued my interest, I'll say that. Not enough to get me to download it and actually try to run it, but I might just do that. I don't know, man. I mean, this is going to be rocking out, and it's like from the perspective of G-Man, I was like, but I want Half-Life from the perspective of a G-String. Jordan... <laughs> I mean, G-Man didn't do that much in Half-Life. It's like, your objective, your objective is to go to this place and then stare and wait for Gordon Freeman to show up so that he knows he's going but, but in the But come on, come on, come on, Jordan. You know secretly if that was what the mod was, you'd love it. <laughs> okay, yeah. That would that, just be brilliant trolling is all I'm saying. Like, that would just be... Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting. I, they had they, the, 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 the official versions with, like, uh, Blue Shift and Opposing Force. Um, so th- this sort of follows in the spirit of that. I don't know. I mean, it's cheap as free, so it might work on Linux, question mark. Oh. Hey, man, it's worth a try. Mm-hmm. A little bit of, uh, just a quick note, coming from Team Cherry, Hollow Knight Godmaster. I want to call it Goldmaster, but it's not. <laughs> Gods Gold and Glory number. is now Godmaster. Why? Because they didn't want to get this shit suit out of them. That's why. It turns out uh, another big company kind of had a game. With that name, uh, everything's still coming out. It's still on track for August 23rd. And uh, just, it's got a different name. I just thought that was like, huh, smart yeah, move. Apparently, the other game is a reasonably well-known Android game with w- which the uh, developing company happens to have a lot of money behind. So, yeah, I want to piss them off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I mean, it is what it is. I'm not going to I'm not going to shit on Team Cherry because, again, they produced probably one of the best games in the past decade for yep. <laughs> less than your average programmer salary. So <laughs> right on uh, yeah. Moonlight. Moonlighter. Uh, so uh, this is this is this is a game that is coming out um, they, or rather is out. Uh, they just released a Linux version. Um, you got to manage a store by day and then kill monsters at night. Um, and uh, so it, it seems to be fairly well received. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of ActRaiser, where like you you have like the 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 community and shop management stuff, and then at night or whatever, you go off and you go adventure and you go find stuff to bring back and kill. Um, I mean, it it looks like you're basically playing the shopkeep from Legend of Zelda, where like if someone tries to steal something, you shoot lightning out of your ass and <laughs> murder them. Um. But yeah, um, they they have a bunch of bug fixes with this release as well. It actually looks okay for for sort yeah. of a Legend of Zelda. You play as the shopkeep thing, and it, uh, like I said, it's apparently fairly well received. Uh, the the price tag is a little is a little steep at twenty bucks, but again, if the quality is there, then what yeah. can you say? And the uh, the roguelike elements of the dungeons you explore and the type of uh, shop management that you need to do to target different people on different days it's uh it certainly piqued my interest but the idea of having to run a shop i'm totally down for the dungeon crawling and whatnot Wait, is this just I, the idea of working but no the idea of having to do a <laughs> typical, chore in a typical video Mexicans. game no it's the idea of doing a chore in the video game it's like if i want to do chores i got plenty to do if i'm playing a video game it's because i'm trying to find something else to do not Chores. Listen, nev- never uh, underestimate the draw of shit like Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley <laughs> where you're, or World of Warcraft, where you're literally paying money to yeah. do chores. Dude, yeah. Pe- Euro Truck Simulator, fucking really. I mean... Yeah, or, <laughs> that's got a cathartic element to it. No, no, that's fuck you. No, it, it doesn't. Uh, now I, yes, now it does. I'm, you're talking about <laughs> Zelda and all that. Now, now I want a Zelda game where you play from the perspective of a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Where, you where you can summon like around. a horde of other chickens to murder shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I want that Zelda game. All, All right. right. Uh, up next, hacking hacking puzzles. Uh, this is Exapunks. It is a game where you uh, you hack quote unquote much in the same way that if you have two people typing on the same keyboard, you can hack twice as fast. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Where um, you 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 can you can build chips and programs and stuff and hack other things and it's a, it's a puzzle solving game. Um, you can um, I think they're really trying to go for like that hacker style aesthetic uh, from like the early '90s, Crash Over at Acid Burn, that shit. And you can even make little applications for a not Game Boy because it has three buttons and not two buttons. Mm-hmm. And you can share them over Steam Workshop. Hey man, listen, this takes place. The year is 1997, so MacBooks boot up with 3D interfaces, and uh, uh well, th- this was back when you could interface your MacBook with an alien spacecraft. Oh yeah, yeah right. Uh, ever ever, ever <laughs> since they got rid of FireWire, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, it's the thing. 1999 early access, uh, but we'd give it a mention. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty steep. Um, uh, next is something I think everyone's kind of sitting back. Wondering, it's like, how's this going to play out? Crazy Justice has a release date. That's August 23rd. This will be free to play for the Battle Royale. The single player experience is going to cost you a few shackles, but it's releasing effectively on fucking everything. Game, uh, let's see, PlayStation 4, Expo, Nintendo Switch, Linux, and Mac. So this is... What what's the game the kids are playing? That this is the the, the the Fortnites. This the is this Fortnite. is basically Fortnite. Yeah, hundred percent Fortnite with the, with the serial numbers filed off. <laughs> oh, that that I don't even know if the serial numbers get filed <laughs> off. L- 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 listen, listen, like all all the assets have the same name, but they end in A. I was looking at uh, some <laughs> thread on the Reddit's, and somebody's like, even the BattleNet icon is like frighteningly the same thing. It's like mm. yeah. I mean, it. I mean, if the game, like I said, if the gameplay is there, it'll be fine. But I'm not sure this game will exist in six months. Is what I'm saying. Uh, it may exist in six months. They're just going to have to, I don't know, put a filter over the graphics to don't make it look so much like Fortnite. <laughs> well, you know, ultimately, you could say, well, with the aesthetics, we were trying to copy Borderlands. Ah, 
Ah, uh, no. no we're, not, we're not ripping off Fortnite. We're ripping off PUBG. <laughs> which you guys ripped off. So. Anyway, we're going to get a Battle Royale game on Linux, so I'll, I'll take what I can get in that aspect, because it'll be fun to play in the after show. Get it Please let, let it not suck. suck. Whether Please you like it or it not. not suck. All right, 16-bit uh, furry porn. No, I mean, if you... If you if, we, 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 I think we already threw chairs at that game. Um... No, this is this is Tanglewood. This is interesting. So remember a couple weeks ago, we had that story in the news section about people still making games for the NES. This is something similar because this is a game you can you can buy the like the nice PC optimized version, but it comes with a ROM that you can dump on a cart and you can actually play this game on an actual Sega Genesis or on a Mega Drive, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's another sort of platformy game, much in the style that you would typically get in the, the Genesis era. It's Sonic, um, with, uh, Sonic with puzzles. Yep. Yeah, but I, I, honestly, yeah, the neat, the neat thing is you can, Looking you can, at you can play this on this, your this looks like Gen- it's uh, the Lion King with different sprites. Yeah. <laughs> I like, like I said, the, the, the fascinating thing for me is you can play this on your Genesis Genesi, Genopod, Genesoxon. I don't know. Hmm. The Mega, uh, Mega Drives, yeah. Mega, <laughs> the, the Mega Droves of Mega Drives. <laughs> Get up next. Uh, yeah, up next, uh, graveyard keeper, guaranteed to be more entertaining than your than any given uh, grave digger concert. Um, yeah, um, it's it's a thing. Um, it's you, got you, pretty it's a, water. Uh, yep, yeah, you, you. It's a game where it's another one of these tourist games, right? Where you manage a graveyard. What got me though is apparently you can sell decomposing human meat to the townspeople. Sold. Yeah, pretty, mm-hmm. that, I, I read that. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you, you have my attention. You had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. Um, but you can you can pick it up. It's again, it's another one of these like hipster pixel games that are charging twenty bucks. And I don't know if it's worth it or not. But the the pixel art actually looks pretty good. Um, it's it's very much made with like a modern sprite painting app. Um, reasonable system requirements. I mean, like like I said, you can sell human meat to people. That that's the one redeeming factor well, in my is mind. The thing is, like the fuck around game with the dark mode for the emos and goss you know it's like <laughs> oh yeah I, I, I can play this is like candy crush for that lot or yeah this is this, yeah emo stardew valley right <laughs> i like that boy what pedro do you well, you've already bought it haven't you <laughs> no 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 it's it's like 15 40 bands so what's that 20 bucks 20 bucks 19 yeah minutes. yeah yeah no if it was like 10 i would have bought it on the spot all right, let's see. Coming up next, something we have talked about, and it's out. That state of mind sounds familiar. Well, one thing that is familiar is twenty nine ninety nine. What stinky caches? This was the mm-hmm. thing I was curious about. It's like, is it a game though, or is it a fucking clicking simulator where you sit back and the story unfolds? Uh twenty nine ninety nine. It's forty five dollars Canadian. Oh. oh. Yeah, twenty. But it looks so. It looks so good, though. It does. It, it's got. It's got the good looks to it, and I don't know, man. Oh, and it's got DLC. Oh, okay. Just start fucking a soundtrack. If anybody's played this, send us some feedback. Let us know. I'm curious about it, and I don't like abusing the Steam refund policy. Yeah. So, but it is out. Uh, it, they say it's futuristic thriller. Uh, diving it's into tr- developed. It's developed by Data Lake, you know, hey, the guys behind uh, Derponia and ah, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Silence. Shadow, Shadow Tactics. Um, S- Silence. It's delving into transhumanism. This looks like Deus Ex in a third person, a narrative driven something. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Better. It, it's Detroit, but without David Cage. <laughs> Oh man! Basically, so, so. I said it better. Forget Pedro said anything. Um, <laughs> All right, we got we got one more story, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do, and uh, this one comes from Flip Fly, uh, who you may remember developed Race the Sun a long time ago. Uh, and uh, kudos to Aaron, uh, the developer, because I poked him. It's like, yo, here we get some keys for your new game, and he made good with the keys. So uh, there will possibly be a. Um, bit of a uh, chairquisition on it, but this is Evergarden. It's a puzzle zen type game. I remember when uh, the first batch of uh, indie, uh, humble indie bundles came out, and there were a bunch of zen type puzzle games. 
Well, this seems to be following in very much the same vein. And Every that, time you uh, say that, I hear Zentai, like the full body rubber, like, stop it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, little deer slash fox thing looks a little bit like the uh, the fox from um, that typing game that I can't remember the name of right now. Oh, the, 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 the one that you can't get past the second level because yeah. the game is broken? Yeah, and you die because you can't afford the EpiPens. And you, yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Epistory, that's what it Epi was. Yeah. Story, Epistory, yeah. yes. That's it. Uh, this does require the elusive uh, graphics card of a DX10 shader model 4.0 not on Linux, so be aware of that. Uh, what was Don't the... need any RAM, though. No RAM, no memory uh, required. It's currently 17% off. That's $14.93. Uh, I'll definitely poke it, see what it looks like. And uh, yep. Race the Sun was a very, very good game for his, like, I think it was his first game mm -hmm. yep. that he did, and it was well done. This is kind of done in the same art style, so... Uh, yeah, good luck mm -hmm. on that. It definitely looks good. All right, coming up next. Oh my God, we're talking about Vulcan, Vulcan and wine, and well, well, welcome to the Vulcan and wine hour. That's all we're talking about. This game cast is like the 21st century version of Greek mythology. You have hooked on methamphetamines. Whoa, that's a, a full face claim there, man. <laughs> We're about Wait, to ask I, people to give us so, money. Uh, now, 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 are you, are you saying that in the sense that it's filled with incest and awful, other awful things that no man should ever see? Well, I wasn't going to tell people that, but sure, why not? <laughs> Look at the monkey. <laughs> dance, 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 monkey dance. If you if you want to if you want to throw some shekels into our into our hat to feed our organ grinder, which I guess in this metaphor is Ben. You can head on over to LinuxGamecast.com, click the support the show button. We've got all sorts of cool stuff that you can click on, enter a credit card number after, and then we can get some money. We've got Amazon affiliate links, New Egg affiliate links, Humble affiliate links that raise money for charities. We even got a wish list if you want to just kick us some hardware. Got like a tablet, some some sound processing shit. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, a 32 core Threadripper running at 6 gigahertz. You can also <laughs> head on over to uh, Patreon. Fuck you, man. Of... Fuck you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, uh, where um, thanks to your support, we have streams five days a week. It's crazy. Um, uh, Tuesday, Tuesdays through Saturdays, including this one that you're watching right now, all brought to you by that. Um, I don't think we have anyone to thank this week. No new people. I no, think um, everyone. How about that, motherfucker? Yes. How about <laughs> we thank all of you ingrates for giving us money and we put on a show for you. No, I'm saying we're, we love you. We, we literally could not do it without you. We can't have stupid freaking show titles that you guys vote on if it wasn't yep. for your support. Hey, check this uh, out. Uh, what did you do Tuesday, Pedro? Let's see. Tuesday, I did a bit of a train wreck, which was bound by flame and OBS kept crashing. They go back and watch that. Unfortunately, fortunately, I guess in one hand, um, YouTube was smart enough to stick it back together. But if you caught it live, it was brilliant. Uh, it it ate shit for like a solid thirty seven minutes, and that was the thing. But not yeah. to be outdone, Jordan Jordan <laughs> rolled his own little train wreck together on Thursday with Left for Brad. Yeah, we, we we decided it's been long enough. We need to finish this game up. We finished one level. We finished one level. <laughs> we're, st we're, we're right now. Right now, we're stuck on. I guess it's the fuck dam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the fuck dam is currently fucking us over. We're gonna, we're we're gonna. I'm gonna try and fix the technical issues for that. We'll be back next week. So if you want to join in for some left bread, hit us up on the Discord because that's the other cool thing you do for you get for being a Patreon is you get to play with us. We we put you on the internet. We make you the star well that's kind of the whole thing about it man uh friday i want to thank everyone for showing up last night for our food bar our trivia night with jackbox we had a couple people in the audience and we had a full crew of eight that was fun that was real and uh yeah let's, let's keep on keep it on i picked up a piece of hardware for everyone well for myself instead of a thread ripper i really want to buy a thread ripper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we couldn't afford it but i can afford it so i bought it and uh we're gonna start tapping on those interviews uh strider call me we want to uh, use you as a test subject and so get, get ready for that get ready for that that that's upcoming and um i'm gonna be eating like rice and mustard because i'm broke so. I mean, you'd normally just eat rice and mustard. Um, anyways, 
Speaking of uh, whining, version not 7.0 is out for DXVK. What is it? You never heard of it? It's that thing that allows you to play DirectX 11 games on Linux by providing their own DLL that implements all of the DirectX 11 functions in Vulkan. Um, so um, there's um, there's been a couple new additions here. Uh, you can the the big one because they, they had another release earlier this week. They've been cranking them out. Uh, the big thing here what, from the previous release, uh, not 6.9. Giggity was um, you can have per app configuration files as opposed to setting environment variables, which is really, really useful for Schreiber because he's been uh, shipping DXVK with a bunch of Lutris runners. And um, if Valve decides to uh, ship the XVK with the Steam Play thing, what they're working on? Who speculation! Knows? <laughs> Bro, yeah, spill up the speculation drive. Um, there's also there's also a new thing with uh, DirectX 10. Isn't that right, then? That's one of the big things that stuck out to me. I mean, support for the D Giggity 10 API and with the custom wine tricks, but with doing, what do you think, Pedro? Is virtual programming just out of business now? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the moment you can run wine tricks DXVK on a wine prefix and it just, boom, done. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, there goes your entire business model just gone. <laughs> well, Well, hang on. No, no. We shouldn't say that because what about like uh, DirectX 11 and Direct 3D9? You couldn't possibly get that over to Vulcan. Oh, Maybe you, you silly son of a bitch. <laughs> you, you absolutely can't. So this is, this is, I understand why they're doing it. I still think it's a little weird. Um, this is uh, D3D9 to 11. I'm just going to leave that one there. Uh, no, no comment. <laughs> um, yeah. So this, this is the point. The point of this project is to, essentially implement uh, DirectX 9 function calls using DirectX 11, because then that can be used with uh, DXVK. So you can theoretically remove some of the bottlenecks involved with the uh, OpenGL uh, DX, or DX9 translation mm -hmm. uh, that Wine usually has to do, unless you're using something like Gallium 9 and Wine 9, in which case, you know, good on you. You just have native support for that. But for those of you who don't want to compile your own Mesa and compile your own custom versions of wine. This is available. Um, it's still going to be a little buggy um, just because again, you're, you're introducing another layer of fuckery to what DXVK is already doing. Just, just, yeah. Just and it, it makes a certain degree of sense because Vulcan can already do HLSL, the direct 3d 11 HLSL. So if you can bring old DirectX 9 or Direct3D9 games to DirectX 11, all of a sudden you can ease off on the uh, CPU uh, bottleneck and you get the native Vulkan HLSL interpretation and DXVK on top of that. So, yeah, that's that. it sounds good. <laughs> sounds like a stack of fun, maybe a stack of nightmares. Um, so, let's... Uh, Night nightmare, hashtag nightmare stack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, before before I shut up the, the segment, Glass Ball, it's a Unity game. I downloaded it. It's free to play. You can get it off Game Jolt. What is it? Your car on a ball made of glass. You got to drive around and collect coins, and sometimes there are explosions that you need to dodge, and it controls like ass. <laughs> and you need to you need to ch mod plus X the executable because it's a zipped Unity game. And of course, you get the Unity screaming up. So if we're throwing chairs at it, it's not going to do well right off the bat. But it is cheap as free. <laughs> maybe if this is your jam, maybe if you like playing game jam type things, you should give this a look. Um, that's really all I have. To, you can play it in your browser. That's one thing. It's an interesting concept. I'll give it that. It's like, yeah, it's a car and it drives around on a little glass ball and you have to pick up the coins and the fuel so you can keep going. It It's different. It's that 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 is a word you could use to describe it. Yes, Pedro. Um, bring, bringing you the true truths, the, the, the hard truths here at LGC. <laughs> that, 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 that is a factually correct statement. I cannot dispute it. Yes, yeah. technically the truth. Open Bloopy, man. Yes. So Bloopy.org is a website that hosts a great deal many games that used to that were developed by Terra Nova team. And um, a uh, there are a couple of games that they've uh, managed to get the rights to redistribute completely for free and open source. Uh, the first two are Planet Bloopy and Colobot. But they also have the archives for the old, old games that they still haven't uh, 
you know, they still haven't gotten the permissions to um, redistribute or m open the sauce up, which is unfortunate because there is like the one game out of the whole list that they have, which is buzzing cars. It sounds a bit uh, odd, but I had a look at the graphics like, oh, that's a late 90s, early 2Ks uh, style racing game. I would very much like well, to they, play they that. They say right on the web zone. It was like from 1997. I was like, wait, that hacker game was 97. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, no, I really want buzzing cars on Linux, so uh, I really do hope they get the permission or the rights to open that sauce up so the community can get cracking on that. Mm -hmm. Spe Thank you. Speaking <laughs> speaking of rights. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Suck it, FC2K team. So <laughs> this is um this is uh what, what was it? Um open IG. Mm -hmm. Uh it is the open source implementation of Imperia Galactica. And this is this is what piqued my interest. Not that it's Java based. I mean, if you have an irrational hatred of Java like Ben Stone, you may want to avoid this like the plague. But <laughs> They actually got permission from the developer and publisher to package the game assets with it. You do not need to actually own the that original. That is a game. very oddly specific uh, minimum requirement for memory RAM: eight hundred and thirty-two megabytes on the nose. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like if if you got that elusive hundred and thirty-two megabyte DIM, you can you can play this game. Maybe maybe you're playing it in a VM. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, they they got uh, they got permission from the uh, de publisher and developer to include the assets, so you can just play this out of the box. Uh, you don't need to get uh, track down a copy of the game via eBay or GOG or whatever. Although it is actually available in GOG, um, but uh, yeah, that that that's the thing. Um, also, the uh, the link to the original game in their GitHub wiki has one too many A's, and that threw me off. I'm like, what? Does this game just not exist? Oh, Imperium Galactica. <laughs> Was this ah! FMV? It had I FMV think. elements. Yep. Yeah, that looks like some 1990s bad green screen in a um, huh. hor hor yeah. horribly deinterlaced. Yeah, <laughs> kind of terrifying. Uh, Pedro, you love blinky shit. I I do. Admittedly, I get uh, very easily distracted by blinky stuff. I'm and... a little disappointed. I thought you were honestly going to try to den deny that for like one no, nanosecond. No, 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 no. Uh, it's uh, I'm at that particular stage of grief acceptance. So I, I, I'm almost through it. So by the time I'm done, uh, I won't care anymore. Uh, but no, this one is if you are one of those people who bought those super YOLO swag MSI laptops that you had the option without uh, to buy it without an operating system. Uh, and well, if you decided to load uh, Linux on one of those laptops, Steel Series, you probably, yeah, you probably realize that the keyboard. You could get some of the uh, RGB functionality going, but not all of it. Well, uh, Akans uh, put out MSI per key RGB. And it's available on GitHub, Microsoft Chill. Uh, <laughs> and uh, basically what it does is it lets you use or lets you set the LED RGBs per key on those still, seri uh, still series keyboards that those MSI laptops come with. It won't work if you have one of those laptops that only does per region of the keyboard um, RGB. This is only for the higher end models that let you set per key settings. So keep that in mind. Do they have some setting to make it look as gaudy as possible? Oh, yeah. Default. Um, <laughs> I saw this and there was some talk about there's another open source project uh, for audio visualization using these fucking keyboards. To say, mm -hmm. <laughs> I not I just would it's make Berkey LEDs, man. Nothing, Listen, nothing. People, a people like to do drugs. That's all I'm saying. I, I I would have to spend thirty minutes and like possibly two bottles of black fingernail polish to fix the problem if I had one of those. Man. <laughs> oh, man, you're gonna drink two bottles of black fingernail polish? <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, last but not least, uh, sticking with the keyboard theme. DOS keyboard. We talked about it on a weekly daily Wednesdays. It turned out that uh, they had banned a couple of members in their forums. The uh, just talking about the five Q, and why w were they posting horrible things? No, they're like, hey man, you th there's no software for this outside of Windows. If you want to use it on Linux, come on, check this out. And they're like, no, we can't have that. So they threw down the ban hammer, man, and 
I guess this is the closest thing they could do to damage control, Pedro. Yeah, I guess it's uh, it was a pretty bad apology, but it, at least they it wasn't a non-apology. Uh, they actually admit, yes, we got a little hasty with banning people, but they don't actually explain the why. Uh, if you want to find out the why, uh, you will see if you dig around. There's a couple of articles about this. It's because they are actually working on tools for macOS and Linux to let the uh, DAS Keyboard 5Q do all of the fancy stuff that it can do, like uh, log each and every single keystroke and send it to their server because that's what it does and um yeah uh when they saw that there was an open source project and people were talking about it they according to their apology they kind of overreacted and they just started banning people left and right so and so, that, so your, your keystrokes can go to us nobody else yeah and uh apparently Ven, uh you said that you mentioned this on um lwd on, on the show yes. we were both on when i mentioned yeah. it i i wasn't <laughs> paying attention it's very drunk so, man <laughs> it was the middle of the day you are prone to day drinking um, yes uh but yeah no apparently uh on the rlinux thread uh about the apology they pointed out that um there, the Wikipedia page for DAS keyboard had been edited to remove certain sections of the, uh, of oh, the they, thing. They were actively taking it out. And then yeah. further than that, if you go back to the Weekly Daily Wednesdays that we did, I tracked and linked to that, that the IPs were coming from Austin. I mean, this yep. was like from <laughs> headquarters. Yeah. Dicks. So, yeah, it, they were actively trying to put a big pillow on it, just smother it to death. Mm -hmm. And this being the internet, it didn't really work. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's the best form of damage control that you can do, but you done goofed on that one, man. I mean, yeah. A, I would never buy a blinky ass keyboard. B, I sure as fuck would never buy one from this company. Because yeah, you just burn the hell of a lot of people with this little stunt. Bad move. You, you, can, you can buy a nice mechanical keyboard from... Bilko, who are not paying us, they provided the Hobo Crusher 2000. Two, 200. Or Ozo. 2000, 2001, <laughs> the little thing uh, curled. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. I'll allow that. Um, Carry MX switches on the cheap. Ozone. Or you could be like a sane person and not need uh, a keyboard that you have to wear earmuffs for. No, I think, I, think you're a I think you're a crazy person if you don't use a keyboard that you you slowly get hearing loss from I, I, I like being able to type while I'm doing a show. Isn't that right, Steve-O? And, <laughs> and I hate you. All right, coming up next, uh, we review a mostly free-to-play game. We'll see how that goes. It's Insidious. It's Insidia. It's developed by Bad Seed. Developed on Unity and it's it's a free to play game. It's very rare that we get one of these on the chair acquisition, but there is a paid component. And uh, the lovely, lovely developers from Bad Seed did deign to give us a copy of the Unlock Everything pack. Um, so what? So what is it? Insidia is a tactile game of turn based duels. Carefully move your team of powerful champions and wave their attacks together to claim victory in the field battle. Conquer your foes and claim the spoils of a post apocalyptic world. This is a chair QA edition. This is where we take a game. Sometimes the developer sends it to us. Sometimes, oh god, that's terrifying. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes uh, we buy it ourselves, but we uh, break it down. We give you the facts of does it launch? Does it perform at 1080p? Are the graphics and the controls? And we give it a score from one to four chairs based on that. And then we also break it down in the fun section. We say whether or not we like the game. We assign it an arbitrary score of one to four chairs as well. One chair means that's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that's awesome. That's the rules. So let's kick it off. Vedden, Insidia. Did it work? I'm going to run on the Ubuntu 1804. Check it out, man. It launches. It does its thing. I got a 980 powering this business. Ah, uh, that old crusty thing. So performance at 1080p, that's what it launched at. That's what I tested it at. It's a solid 60. It does window. It does full screen. Nothing exploded. Did not say disparaging remarks about my mother. It thought about it, but it didn't verbalize them. And uh, with the controls, really, this is uh, point and click, 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 click. Keyboard shortcuts, they work. They're on screen. They're easy. They're available. Clean bill of health. Four chairs right out of that box. 
Yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. It certainly does launch. It'll hold 60 FPS at 1080 with a little bit of herky-jerky at the beginning of the match. Um, if you knock off VSync, which you should anyways if you're on Linux, uh, it can get you about 49 on the 49 FIRPS on the UHD, which is not terrible, but it maintains that. Sometimes it'll knock itself up to 50. It's okay. Uh, Graphics-wise, I mean, it looks fine. There's no artifacting or anything. It looks like a game. You can see what's going on. Every It's clear so that you can you know, play the game. So good on that. And control-wise, yeah, you click your mouse... Uh, WASD for the camera movement, and there's some hotkeys, uh, QWER, t- QWER and 1234 for your abilities and people, respectively. Yeah, give it four chairs. Yep, and over here on Solus, running on the uh, Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it uh, held around 50 uh, at uh, UHD. It, uh, yeah, no, you really want to disable uh, the VSync if you're... Uh, Playing you it on like Linux, 30, you get thirty at like UHD it's if you're on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's really annoying. But the yeah no at 1080 it held uh, way past sixty without issues. Uh, so yeah, that was all good. The graphics, the characters all look like they're from the same breed. It's like they all share some parent, uh, but it, they look all right. And the sounds. I guess they're there, but they also work. And controls, yeah, you just have to be careful about where you click because sometimes you will hover over a spot where you want to move a character and the little tile won't light up. That's because you're hovering over one of the UI elements. So it won't register that click. So you have to carefully just like uh, move it slightly out of the UI. There we go. And um, that'll work. So no complaints for me. Four chairs. So there you go, Pedro, uh, who fully advocates eugenics, as we heard previously. <laughs> four chairs. That's uh, so. That's score four. Uh, mixed with working. Looks like, regardless of what you play it on, it will do you good. Now for fun. Yay! Then do you have fun? Fuck you. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, I really didn't. It's free to play. It's turn based. Turn based games can die in a fire. I'm sorry, they're not my gem. But you know, for because I love everyone at home. It's like this is going to be the one that changes my mind, right? Um, I kind of thought the sim, you know, the simultaneous uh, turn thing that'd be kind of neat. Nope, it's not. It's not enough. Uh, if you're wondering about that, you plan your move, they plan your move, and it's basically one move, and then you hit play, see what happens. Uh, okay, it is very simple. I mean, to the point where I understand what's going on. Old man Vin is like, oh, okay, I get this. Uh, all right. That, that's stupid and boring, because I like it. Not the game itself, the entire genre. Uh, it's not ugly. It's simple to pick up. I mean, it's very much casual, I would say. But I think Jordan and Pedro, in the pre-pre-super shows, and we're talking, it was like, well, you're going to... Just, I just, my eyes glossed over. Uh, it is priced to sell. It's completely free. But I'm going to reiterate, I mean, if the genre is not your business, this is not going to be the one that changes your mind. You can try it. It's completely free. Uh, the DLC clocking at thirty four ninety eight is uh, it's it's available, but I do want to point out is you're gonna probably have to play this in forever alone mode question mark more on that mm. probably from Jordan and Pedro, but yes, uh, pass on that one, Chairman. So the game is a little bit convoluted. There's a lot of moving parts because, yeah, you can only move one unit a turn. Each unit has like a passive thing that it will do regardless. And that can be like shooting people, moving people. It can be a conditional trigger. Um, And yeah, like Ven said, everyone puts their moves in at the same time and you hit resolve and you see what happens. So you can like predict and dodge people if you're one of those types. And... Honestly, the most effective strategy I found is literally just try and hold the center as much as possible or stall until you have... Okay, so let let me rewind. This is basically turn-based Dota. (laughs) You want to make it to the other end of the map so you can kill the enemy's ancient, and that's it. That's that's how you win the game. And eventually, after uh, after characters uh, resurrect enough times... Eventually, you can just gain access to uh, the enemy stronghold, in which case, if you have a guy who can just make a beeline, that's it. That's the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, and no matter what you try, it's always going to revolve around that. And I think that also has to do with the roster of heroes that you have, because there are a couple really good ones. The Wolfman, 
the guy who actually has hit points more, who can survive mm-hmm. more than a single attack. And um, the, 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 the poison guy and the gun chick are really the, the best. If you don't, if you're not using them in your team, you're going to fail. Um, and I really feel like this game could benefit from a much larger roster of heroes with some more varied strategies that actually work with the gameplay that the game is trying to convey. Um, because a lot of, a lot of the heroes just suck. They're not good. They're, they're, for a specific type of strategy that is not the dominant strategy here. And so you will end up wasting your time playing them. Of course, I'm saying this. This is all against the AI because, as was mentioned before, no one's actually fucking playing this game online. So for a free-to-play MOBA, um, yeah, that, that doesn't really bode too well for it. I, th- I like the gameplay well enough, actually. I, th- I thought it was perfectly fun. Um, but that's really about it. It there's definitely some improvements that it need sorely needs that it's not mm-hmm. going to get because no one's playing it. So I'm going to give this two chairs. It's a valiant effort, but yeah. Pedro. Yeah, I I too like the gameplay, but the biggest problem with this online tactical duel game is that no one else is playing it. And the reason that no one is playing it is because there's one winning strategy. It's not about tactics, it's about the characters you play. You stick to that formation and you stick to it for dear life. It's like Jordan already mentioned, you get the dude with the HP, you get the chick with the gun that deals a ton of damage, you get the uh, little poisony guy, and you get the uh, little move-around guy. Those four are basically the winning team. There is no way uh, the AI can beat you. And, well, that's about all the AI can do is just lose to you. And it, there's really no way to tell whether or not that would be different if it was against other players because there's just no one else. And eh, But, you know, I have a sneaking suspicion that it wouldn't be very different. The game hasn't had any updates since May. And... Without any updates, there's no meta shift, there's no new characters, there's no rebalancing of abilities, there's nothing. So there's nothing to keep it interesting. And that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate because, like Jordan, I didn't mind the mechanics at all. But right now, the game is stuck in a vicious cycle of noob. The devs won't update the game because no one's playing it. Players won't return to the game because it's not getting updated. Rinse, rinse. And, and, and also no one's playing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, no. For me, it gets one chair because as it currently stands, it's not fun at all. Once you figure out how to beat the AI, that's all you need to do. That's that's really all you can do. All right. Yeah. So uh, that that that's it. That's our thoughts on Insidia. Uh, we got any closing remarks before we move on to the hate mail? Uh, maybe if we all get together, we could play against each other, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll be the only ones playing it. We'll have a uh, infinity percent boost of the average players according to Steam charts because the average for this game is zero. The infinity percent. <laughs> I, I, so, some, someone flung calculus. That's fine. Coming up next. <laughs> uh, coming up next. Well, we got we we talk about what real Squirrel. Linux users do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, everyone in between, no matter what the age, gender identity, or whatever the fuck you call yourself, we love you. And we hate you at the same time. It's kind of our thing. It's Linux Gamecast Weekly. It's come to an end. And if you'd like to leave us some hate mail, you can go to LinuxGamecast.com. You just hit the contact button. You fill out the form. It's reasonable. Hey, Pedro, Pedro, easy. I updated our contact thing. I put a picture Ooh, of us. And, but it has a picture. <laughs> but I yes. use bold letters just because I want to make something very fucking clear that's been an issue lately. Because if you want the three <laughs> of us to take a look at your project, good. But you need to provide three copies. And uh, if you don't, we'll mention you in a new segment coming up called Developers Who Can't Read Good. Also, uh, don't don't offer us Xbox One keys for your game, please. Okay? Because that was a thing that happened. Now, now, if you're going to send us an Xbox One with it, then yes. No, no, you need to offer us three Xbox keys. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, three Xbox One keys and, 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 and three, three X- and three Xboxes. That totally we not so. a true fucking story. 
<laughs> it was actually a thing that someone offered us. I have an Xbox One key for a game if anyone wants it, just saying. Uh, well, in any case, just fill that, out that, the that's form. The, that's the new giveaway. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's a uh, hate mail. It's it, it it it's a thing we like. And someone uh, left us a comment on the YouTube's the other day, and um, that Tech wasn't Libra on the YouTube's. Says, it wasn't. No, I saw. I oh, thought it was on Twitter. On right. Twitter. I remember the, the one on okay. YouTube last week was from Frostclaw. He yes. We'll, we'll, we'll yes, throw this in because it was a real quick one. Since we only got one this week, he asked a very very important question. Jordan has autism question mark. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> to which yeah. I replied simply, Hella. I too like to respond to questions on the internet with names of Norse gods. But anyways. Tech Libre, he uh, asked on Twitter, love the show. Feels though. Real hashtag Linux gamers don't run games on Win 10 VMs. Uh, we hacked DX9-11 Bruh. and .NET on Wine. Yo, GitHub, GitHub Foo is great, but at Godot Engine is now available in a quote download and click unquote version v3.0.06. I think so, he was specifically mentioning uh, we, we were we were talking about a game that was available just as a Godot project that you have to build yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I guess he misunderstood what I was saying. I said that you need to actually download Godot and build the project, not build Godot yourself. If you want to do that, though, I mean, you can. I'm not going to tell you how to waste your time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I think we need to sit back and deconstruct this uh, because you know you're coming out with those feels, man. Th thanks for getting back to us. Thanks for loving the show. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Uh, the first thing you're walking out with, gamers don't run games on what VMs. It's like, no, nah, man, we're lead hacks, man, with the DX9s and 11s. And that, that. But it's followed up by compiling stuff's hard. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just going to say that real Linux users coat themselves in crunchy peanut butter, comes. walk outside <laughs> naked, Always and start the peanut butter. kicking trees. <laughs> but only real men ride green streams of semen. That's sexist. <laughs> the semen uh, yeah. <laughs> they're perfectly good sailors you don't I, I mean fuck man uh, I don't know how, how about real Linux gamers don't have wine installed in their fucking box <laughs> yeah I'm not a real Linux gamer in that case real <laughs> Linux gamers give themselves three circumcisions I, I, I met a real Linux gamer once dude, dude. <laughs> You can't call yourself a real Linux gamer unless you stood up on the peak of a mountain and, I don't know, peed on a goat. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new subreddit, man. Real Linux gamers. <laughs> Seriously, though, this, this is like the shit that comes. It's like only real Linux gamers do this. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of one of the, I don't want to say worrying, but we're, we're small enough segment of the gaming market. I, I know the impulse is to like, but we we can go dumber or we can divide further. No, stop. I mean, hey, we all run Linux, but do you run Arch? And then then he's like, but but do you run Linux? Your Linux gamer on AMD and shit like this. Like just just peace fuck out. Let, let's just well, let's Listen, do a group I, fucking hug. Just I know we don't really like each other, but let's pretend we like each other and we all get along so we can. Say, hey, port your game over. We'll all buy it. Because at the end of the day, that's what fucking matters, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to make it rain and uh, support the people who support Linux. Yes, be a Linux port your gamer. That just gave me cancer. All right. Kill the show, please. I'm, I'm dead already. <laughs> On that bombshell, <laughs> let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we're always claiming to do that early show. That might happen one day. I'm Vin Stone. You can always get a hold of me on Twitter, as uh, Tech Libre did, or Google Plus, plus Vin Stone. The easiest way, if you are a patron, just at reply me in Discord, and I'll get back to you, much to your chagrin. I'm Jordan Svung. You can find me covering myself in smooth peanut butter, going outside naked and roundhouse kicking shrubs, because I'm not a true Linux gamer, but you can still find me at Burke Pool on Twitter. Plus, Jordan Svung on Google+. Plus. And I am the real Portugamer. gamer. I am Pedro Mateus. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter, or plus Pedro Mateus on Google+. Plus. 
Not sure that's I something you would be proud of. No, no, no. He's, I he's, gave Jordan cancer for once. He, he, he's trying to make it a thing, Jordan, and he's going to fucking regret this decision because I'm making you. Sh- uh, Chiron lower thirds, the Portuguese gamer. The, the Portuguese gamer. Yeah, the, 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 the plagiarizing Portuguese gamer. We need more. We need more P's to like complete the alliteration. <laughs> they call it P men. Hey man, let's roll those credits and thank all the beautiful people who make this nightmare train possible. Sure, don't sue us, George Lucas. <laughs> The, the plage morizing gamer. My, my, Michael Michael Ein or whatever, whatever whoever is in charge of Disney now. I uh, I don't know Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Apple's in charge. I don't know. I don't make the rules. Portuguese gamer does. <laughs> the Portuguese <laughs> gamer decrees from his mountaintop that thou shalt. I don't know. I, I listen, man. I heard the Portuguese gamer installed like seven Linux. <laughs> I like I, it. I, Keep it coming. I heard the porch gamer fought Richard Stallman and won. <laughs> the motherfucking porch gamer can vibrate through walls. <laughs> I heard the porch gamer once snuck into Bill Gates's bedroom and stole his underwear. It smelled so nice. So saith the porch gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Who just admitted to breaking and entering. Hi, NSA. <laughs> NSA investigating <laughs> breaking and entering. Okay. Underpants yeah, sure. gnomes, man. <laughs> no, the Portuguese gamer is the OG underpants gnome. Listen, por- underpants gnomes are a threat to national security, is all I'm saying. <laughs> much fire. more than much more than Canada. By the uh, way, I'm Jill now. We love <laughs> no. That was the that was the wrong preview. I'm not Jill. Dumbass. Dun dun dun. Five dudes.